delegation to order at uh, 9.08. And if you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I don't have the right costume. I think I need to get recostumed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you didn't have the right voice, <laughs> but I guess not. Before we get into public input, I'm wondering if we have any schedule conflicts this morning uh, among the members of the delegation. Do we have any? We can go through today. today. I turn today. The phone off. <laughs> uh, this, you mean in the next few weeks? Well, no, just today, just the, for this meeting today. No, no, not so today. we can go through the whole morning if we uh, I anticipate show. that we will. Okay, fine. Thank you. Then I will open up to public input. Yes, uh, former Representative Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, I'm Robert Bridgen of Newton, and I am a former representative. The promised subcommittee report, I believe, is due today. And uh, this, I think, will be a uh, part of a long and continuing discussion about uh, both the fate of the old nursing home and the construction of the new uh, that's continued over several years. Uh, as part of that discussion, we've had um, some contentious times. We've had uh, disagreement. Uh, we've had agreement. One of the things, though, that I think we were all agreed about was the great value of the effort by the commissioners to take their plans for the new nursing home to the public to make absolutely clear what was being proposed, uh, the assumptions that underlie, uh, under, underlay the plans, uh, give people an opportunity to respond, to critique, uh, and as a result I think the plans became better. Uh, and at the end, when a decision was made, it was made with knowledge that the public had some sense of what the delegation was deciding when it made its decision. Uh, I would urge you to receive the report of this subcommittee today, to consider it carefully, but not to act on it today, to give time for considered public input on the plan, reaction, vetting of the assumptions in the plan. I will not speak to the plan because I have no notion of what is in it. Uh, so far as I know, it has received no public scrutiny. Uh, it is in meetings which so far as I know, it comes out of meetings which so far as I know were not publicly noticed. Uh, and so I think it's essential that as you move forward on this, and this is a really important matter for us over the next few years, and involves property which is, probably has a value in, in several millions, uh, that you give time for the public to become informed clearly about what is uh, in, in the decision that faces you, uh, and so that when you come to make that decision, you know have a better sense of where that public is. And so I thank you for that. Thank you very much. Anyone else on public input? Uh, yes, uh, former Representative Wiley. I'm Susan Wiley and I'm from Sandwich and I do have my notes written out and I'll pass those down. Um, again, <coughs> to pick up from last week, we talked a lot about dates and about dollars and about old nursing home and budgets and I am here again today to say, let us pull together some citizen participation. And as uh, <coughs> former Representative Bridgham has mentioned, there are many stakeholders, there are many people who will have many good ideas. And just as we did 
for the new nursing home. Let us go into the communities and ask people what they want. We need to have a public hearing. The rebuild, the reuse, the remodel, all of that has been done very many times in very many places. And just looking at what has happened at the new Kennett Junior High School from a building that was in terrible shape, multi-level building at that, looking at the five schools they are currently rebuilding to reuse in Concord, they have been very open about that entire process. They've worked very hard to get citizen input, and I believe that doing the same here is essential and important. Your 14 very busy representatives were three county commissioners who have never, as far as I can tell in the last year, had all the right information at the right place at the right time to make good, solid decisions. The subcommittee on the old nursing home, I don't know how that ever came about, but it certainly seemingly should be redone in that there needs to be some folks on that subcommittee who are not just representatives, but from, from other parts of the citizen. We're talking about a resource that is worth many, many dollars to many, many people in Carroll County. And I can't believe that there aren't people out there who could walk through a tour of that building, get the specs and the information that we have gathered and say, wow, this would make a good whatever. Fitness center, child care center, meeting rooms, professional offices for the many folks who spend time on the campus. Even, we haven't asked our county employees what they would like to see there. Our county employees are continually looking at efficiencies on this campus. Let us do that. Let us ask other people in the community. And I would hope that there, if nothing else happens from the subcommittee, at least there is a public hearing. And I would like to think that the public hearing would be a major part of what happens to the old nursing home. I sat in the chair here and listened. I sat in the chair here and listened in the last five years. I sat in a public hearing on the floor because there were too many people for the chairs available in this room when Representative McConkey was the hearing officer about bringing the UNH Extension Service to this campus. <coughs> there were a few people who asked questions about the role of government but for the most part, every person in this room sent a message that said, yes, we want to see this happen. And to even think that we should tear down that facility seems to me to be not at all representative of what people in this county want. Thank you for Thank your time. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have any other comments or any other input? Uh, hearing none, then, before we proceed with the agenda, I just want to uh, report on the reason why Representative Patton is not here this morning. Some of you may know that she is on a committee that is now executing bills today. That's a very important part of the process of legislation where a committee not just has committee hearings, that work has already been done, but this is the time when the uh, various committees uh, sit down and deliberate each, each piece of legislation that comes before the committee and they have to make decisions about whether or not those bills are appropriate for moving on to the full house or to be uh, declared inexpedient to legislate. So uh, that's where she is today and she sends her regrets for not being here. Yes, Representative Lundberger. Uh, yes, um, just a the speaker didn't realize how the sub the, the subcommittee on the old nursing home uh, came about, and I thought perhaps uh, it was important that we reiterate that uh, the subcommittee was appointed at one of our meetings, and um, it was um, the people that wanted to be on the subcommittee were uh, you know asked to volunteer for it and uh, those people that wanted to serve, in fact, did. And so it was done at one of our delegation meetings, 
and it was certainly uh, in the minutes as well as uh, you know what uh, what it you know so it, it wasn't that it was done you know just behind closed doors or anything else we did in fact identify the members on who wanted to be on the subcommittee and since that time additional people have uh, have come and uh, the um, the other point that I wanted to make is that the uh, the last uh, subcommittee meeting of the old nursing home was announced uh, it wasn't put in the newspaper as uh, you know as many other things are but it certainly was uh, available at, uh, here and uh, Lori did send out uh, a notification that the meeting was going to be held and there were several people from the public here yes yes thank you that's a good point point. Uh, and that meeting uh, it was posted uh, all the necessary posting was taken care of uh, and I would also say that it was a uh, that subcommittee is a subcommittee of the delegation and there was no intent to preclude going forward with securing other types of input. That wasn't the intention. It is a typical uh, subcommittee of the delegation, and we have those, separate, uh, those subcommittees set up on a number of areas of the budget, as you, as you know. So this was not done to replicate what was done when we saw input for the new nursing home. That was not the intention of it. Uh, Representative uh, uh, McCarthy, you had a question or a point? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I would like to call attention to the Constitution of the State of New Hampshire. Act <coughs> first, Article 8, which states that the members of the House of Representatives and all magistrates, as a matter of fact, uh, all of the power is derived from and lies with the people. That's what it says. And the magistrates are elected to do one thing, to vote in their stead. Now, for people to stand up and, and to infer that after our meetings we go home and go to bed and nobody talks to anybody in our constituencies, I take a front to that. I talk every single day to people. They talk to me on the computer. They call me on the telephone. I know what my constituents want. And because it differs from what somebody else might want, I'm sorry. But I vote instead of my constituents, according with the Constitution of the State of New Hampshire. Representative McConkie. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, conversation with uh, Representative Patton, who couldn't be here today, uh, when asked, uh, I had asked for the um, old nursing home subcommittee to meet after today's business and before the one o'clock uh, meeting of the nursing home. And it was put down uh, not as a subcommittee meeting, but it was put down as old nursing home. I'd like to draw attention to that. It's the intent of, of the subcommittee to meet after after today's uh, meeting and ahead of that. And I wanted to make that known. I believe it was mentioned uh, earlier in earlier conversation. Yes, the latest uh, the latest agenda does have that listed at uh, 12:30, and it's listed as simply old nursing home. And we will get into uh, a number of discussions on that. Yes. Uh, Representative Babson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The lost dates that have to be posted in two prominent places, one of which can be the website. It wasn't on the website, and I don't believe it was posted, and it still isn't posted downstairs, so I don't see how you can hold the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, that meeting would go forward, if not as a subcommittee it can go forward as a topic and uh, we have another discussion that will be taking place during that time so uh, I don't see an issue with that uh, that will not be a decision issue for that subcommittee as such yes go ahead is it a gathering of more than uh Two members of the committee it will be a gathering of the delegation uh, with an invited uh, Guest. Okay, if we can, let's uh, proceed with the agenda. I'd like to go on to the uh, first items of uh, the farm, water, sewer portion of the budget. And uh, who is here to present on? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to present on the uh, 
We will start with the farm. Okay. So if there's any questions, or do you want me to just go down and point out differences? Okay, that's on page uh, 17. If everybody has that on the Mr. Chairman, sheet. yes. If I could, could I could I have a copy of the latest? I do not have the latest copy of the expenditures. Is there another copy here? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just have. I don't know where. I just have it. Where it. Where it. Where it. Where it. Anybody else? Yeah, you might as well. Yeah. There's no date. Is there another one? I've got one, but I don't know. A later one? Which one is it? Twelve six. No, you have to pass that over. You have to pass that over. Thank you, Commissioners. As long as people don't forget them next time, they on the corner and then they'll have it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pass that over, please, to Janet. Thank you. You said it was 12-3, Frank? 12-6. 12-6. 6 Here is another. I have another one here. If someone needs one. Did you? No, I, well, I'm going to say it. Anybody need one down here? Are there any extras? Uh, the public to follow along. Do we have any? Do we have enough? That's an answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so we're on. Uh, Page 17, is that what we're looking at? Yep. <coughs> I believe so. Mine's different. But yeah. 17. The only, uh, I guess, I'd fast forward I, primarily to the end of the budget. Um, there's really, if you look through next to no changes um, that has been submitted, if you look at the bottom, we're talking about an $800 difference from last year's budget. The only changes, uh, the salary lines, Include the 30 cents that the commissioners talked about last week for non-union non employees. Um, there has been some reductions in a, a few things like the medical costs, same as everybody else's budget for the most part. Other than that, we try to run pretty much flat, same budget as requested earlier in the year. Okay, so the uh, the salary line, the commissioner's salary line includes the uh, thirty cent. Correct. Hourly increase, right? Okay. Anybody have any questions on medical or anything like that? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Representative Walker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. Up uh, on the uh, new equipment line, O ninety seven. Uh, we have. Uh, a level budgeting of thirteen thousand dollars, but um, I was wondering what if you have an accounting of what the breakdown of that would be. Yes, uh, originally I don't know if you're if the column that you guys have shows what I put in for versus what the commissioner settled with, but it was thirteen thousand five hundred what I put in for for basically two to go towards two items. One last year we purchased a new lawnmower for the facility with all the new lawns that we have here. At the time, I asked for a bagging system that went on to the lawnmower. We decided that we shouldn't do that in one year. We'll get the accessory the next year if it's needed. We discovered this summer that it would be needed. We tried to go for a year without it. Discovered that we needed it. 
So that's $3,500 for that bagging system, which cuts down a lot of labor on these huge lawns that we have out here. The other 10000 I put in for something that um, I think needs to be brought up to the delegation because sometimes when I foresee something coming, it doesn't always make it to this level. But uh, a new wood processor in our future is going to be needed. The processor we have is extremely old, probably 10 years old, um, inefficient. We're milking it along, but it's going to be an expenditure that we need to replace in the future. So $10,000 of that, 13000 I would like to have go into <coughs> towards that new processor, which would probably, we wouldn't be able to pay for it this year, we'll be able to encumber that money. Um, we also are planning to do a timber cut this year that will generate more revenue that I don't have on the revenue sheets because I can't determine that until we have the timber cut. But those are some other lines of thinking that we're going. Um, I asked in uh, capital expenditures for the money for the the processor. The commissioners, which I agree with their decision, they said that we couldn't ask for that until we have the timber cut done and we can see a justification for why you need a big piece of machinery for that amount of cost. Um, so that's why that hasn't come forward. But it is something that I feel that the delegation should know that it's one of the next big items on the farm that really needs to be replaced and it makes a lot of money for the farm, and we're slowly increasing that amount of money, and it's something that's going to need to be replaced, so I just want to bring that to the attention of the delegates. So those two major items are in the budget, the one dealing with the lawn mowing and the other dealing with the wood processing? Yes, sir. That's right. not the full amount. It's just, to, <coughs> it's just to start putting some money towards so we don't have one lump sum amount of money one year right. to, to try to help out with that. How much is a wood processor? Yeah. 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 That's that's a good <laughs> follow up. Sure. So, you know, thank you for your response to the question. I was just wondering, though, what is the total cost of the wood processor that you are um, interested in purchasing in, there, the, in the distant, near, near to distant future? There are many different models out there. I haven't settled on any one particular model. Um, but since we, I brought up the amount of money to the commissioners, I looked at one model that I thought <coughs> would do the job very well. Um, that was priced around $65,000. Since then, the commissioner has talked to some people that he knows, has presented, we've looked at some other options. So I just gave the commissioners a high number. doesn't mean that we have to spend that much or settle on that model. There are several out there to look at, and when we get closer to that, we'll be investigating it a lot closer. Uh, Representative McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, what I would like to know is uh, just a simple answer, really. On the line uh, 097, do you have a sheet, an addendum to line 097, that specifically states, in accordance with the law, what equipment you are going to purchase during this budget year for thirteen thousand dollars? Do I have a? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Do, you, do I? Have, I just listed the two items. I'm not. The way I, I heard understand. it though, that the, the two items were something in the future. You putting something aside so that you get no. something in the future. The the thirty five hundred dollars is for this year. The purchase will be made this year. The other uh, of what? Of the lawnmower accessories. Lawnmowers. Okay. Yeah. What else? And the other ten thousand was for to, to go towards the wood processor. As what you what go I towards, and when will that be purchased? I'm hoping next year, but next year. Yes, sir. That would be the plan if we get a timber cut to help justify. Well, shouldn't the cost. that follow up? Yes. Shouldn't that be in next year's budget? If you would like, sir, I'm trying. I think it would be better to plan. You know, I go to my town meeting. They're going to buy a hundred thousand dollar plow truck. They don't take the hundred thousand dollars out in one year. They put a little bit money towards it. So that's what my thought process was towards that. Why well, have one chunk that goes out? Why not be able to build up towards that chunk? If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but that was my thought process of certain equipment. Representative, oh, do you have a follow-up? Another follow-up, yes, please. Sure. So we got, there's only one actual piece of equipment that you plan to purchase this year, and that's the three thousand five hundred dollar. Uh, lawnmower is it? The accessories to lawnmower, yes sir. And the accessories or whatever? Yes sir. That's all you plan to purchase this year? From that item, yes sir. Okay. Yes, Representative. Thank you. I think Will does a, a really good job managing the farm and I respect his opinion and putting $10,000 aside for the wood process uh, appears to me to be a good idea, but why don't we think about a capital uh, Put it, reserve in, account. Right. put it in the capital put it reserve, in the capital reserve account. Yeah.
makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, Representative McConkie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a couple, three, if I could just stay with them, if that be all right, Mr. Chairman, yes. questions? Yes. Uh, your lawnmower that you purchased last year, do you have a ballpark of what that cost? Yes, that was $12,998, sir. Okay, so $13,000 lawnmower. Thank you. The, um, the budget on, on um, line item on uniforms, I'm happy to see has been reduced from what it was to one dollar. My question is why it wasn't zeroed out and why, in your opinion, there was need to keep a dollar, if I'm correct, on how it's listed here. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I, we put one dollar in there just to let the line item add something, I guess. That's um, the, um, the There was conversation in an earlier meeting uh, about a building space that I wasn't aware of. Uh, I believe there's a, a small building that was used to house a generator or something that the farm is looking to take over that building. Can you tell me about that? There's a lot of assumptions with that, but uh, I'll tell you what I know. Um, there's a building that is attached, used to hold the old boiler system to the old nursing home that was there. Um, it's been re done many years ago. They use it for a storage facility. The maintenance department for the nursing home uses it for storage. They have a right full of storage in there amongst their many storage places throughout the complex. Um, the thought was, as originally, if um, storage was available to the old nursing home for maintenance to consolidate theirs, that would be abandoned from them. Um, and we would put our lawnmower equipment, um, lawn care equipment in that building. And none of that has happened because None of that ball has been rolling. Um, that was just a thought that could happen in the future. Thank you. Do you have any idea how, how large an area that is? I could not give you a square footage answer on that, sir. And, if, and to follow up on, the, on that point, would you mind providing, or maybe the commissioners already have this number, could you come up with a square foot amount of space that your department has in existing buildings uh, that's being used by your department? If you could, please, for another time. Yes, sir. I'm okay. going to over that. Um, my last question, if I could, is uh, last year we put aside money to uh, build a barn out in the field, which was going to be used for uh, wood processing. Could you give me an update where we are on that? Have we spent all of our monies? How large a structure have we built? Yes, sir. We haven't, um, as far as the money-wise goes, we haven't spent all the money. Um, we, this last year, I don't know if the delegation is where, we expanded our blueberry production. We put in over 800 blueberry bushes last spring, so that slowed down going to the building. This fall, we went to the building, we put in, we uh, took the topsoil off, getting it ready for some dirt work, and we cut all the lumber of all the trees, had the lumber milled out of the trees from our own property that we used to build the full barn, and that's what we've gotten done this year. Um, I expected to use some of the at some point, if the building gets tore down or whatever the decisions happen later, um, of the nursing home, they have a crusher that's going to come in. We're going to use some of that material for the base of this pole barn. Um, so we're at that point right now. Hopefully in the spring we'll be able to continue uh, with the building. So if, if I could. Yes, So correct. if I remember correctly, you also, the trusses were already purchased for that building. Yes, sir. And you've cut wood from, um, you've cut raw wood uh, so that you could build that. Is that wood inside somewhere or sitting outside? It's out drying right now because it was green. Okay, covered I'm assuming. With its own boards, yes. Sir. Okay. So the barn that was extremely important last year to aid us in increased production, you found space this year to, to use uh, to process your wood so that didn't hamper you from doing your job of uh, cutting firewood. And it hasn't, it hasn't hampered the efficiency, sir. Um, we asked for the pole barn to increase the efficiency. Instead, we're handling the wood four or five times and on new and space that uh, is crowded and not usable for the proper, what we're trying to do. We got away with it last year. We're trying our best to get away with it this year. And that pole barn is going to be our number one top priority this year to get, this coming year, to get put up. Fortunately, blueberry bushes that are sitting out there were our priority last year because we need to get them in the ground so they don't die. I, 
I, I can appreciate the need to keep something alive. Um, on, on the uh, pole barn, any idea how much money we still have sitting? Uh, it 